We're heading offshore today. As the forecast has stated that there's going to be light offshore winds in the morning and then it's going to die off to virtually nothing in the afternoon. Fortunately these days, the online forecasts you can get on Swell Map, Windy and the likes provide really good accurate forecasts and actually very rarely are they wrong. Once out there, we jumped in the water and the visibility actually wasn't that great. Especially for being offshore like this and being March, you'd expect the visibility to be a little bit better. But there certainly was no shortage of bait fish and there was masses of big schools of big koharoo. Koharoo are one of the best bait fish to look for when you're hunting bigger predatory fish as most of New Zealand's predatory fish will eat these. When they're lit up like this with those beautiful fluorescent yellow backs that means they're either feeding or being fed on and in this case their schools of kingfish are chasing them. As soon as you see the the kohru light up like this it pays to get down to their level as no doubt there's kingfish or something else that's going to come racing in behind them. Although the GoPro makes the vis look a lot better than what it is, it wasn't quite good enough to spot lots of things from the surface. So as I was going along in this flat area, I'd make dives to inspect what was on the bottom. Because as soon as you got down to the bottom there, you'd get the light reflecting down off the kelp, and you were able to see a little bit further. And kingfish kept coming through, chasing all these koharoo. Although there was lots of fish, they were just passing by on this flat area and I needed to find a high point. So I kept swimming till eventually it looked like the bottom would come up higher towards the surface. It didn't take long and I spotted something. I dived to inspect and it's not a real high point on the bottom but it's still something that changes on the bottom compared to the rest of the surrounding ground. Areas like this is more likely to hold fish, which means fish will pass by, but also you'll get some resident fish hanging around it. I don't want to play all my cards too quickly, so I want to get down and I just want to inspect and see what comes in. If I move around too much in this dirty water, it's just going to spook fish that I'm not going to see. There could be a good fish that's not far away from me. With all this bait fish here, with the demizels and the big koharoo, there's bound to be some snapper in the area. Sure enough, a kingfish enters the fray as we saw kingfish coming out of the gloom all day chasing those big koharu. After inspecting the area, I sort of had a plan and saw where I thought most likely the fish were going to be hanging. I snuck to the bottom here and was just creeping along looking for a good place to plant myself and see what I could attract in. found a nice little hole here in between the kelp and I thought well, I might as well park myself here and see what might come in. I knew the demoiselles around me are going to start surrounding me and they're going to cover me like a blanket so then other fish in the area are going to be inquisitive but they can't quite see what I am. Keep your spear gun in a ready position. And this is why you want a nice light maneuverable gun. If it's too heavy and too cumbersome, it's just going to sink and get caught in the kelp. In this situation, a fish could come from anywhere. And as I spot out there, there's a snapper drifting around in mid-water. I do my best to call it in. I want to keep myself low in the kelp and not give away my position too much. And here my gun's a little bit long and a bit slow to get in position. 
It would have been better in this situation to actually have a shorter gun. This technique of getting snapper is not something you use all the time, as in clear water the snapper will often see you from a long way away and won't come as close as this one did, even the smaller ones. But when the water's dirty and there's a lot going on like this, I do like doing this and waiting on the bottom to see if you can entice something in. You'll be amazed what turns up around you that you didn't already know was there. Also in situations like this where there's a lot of bait fish, a lot going on, there's a good chance there could be sharks around in the area. So I want to minimize my encounters with them. So I want to make sure I put my fish into my float boat so I, I don't entice a shark to come pinch it. Often that trick there of lying on the bottom and enticing something in won't work more than once in an area. I'm going to try and move further away from that spot maybe 50 or so meters where I think the fish might not have been spooked. Then I'm going to try and replicate the same thing. I'm going to look for another high point and another nice spot for me to lie but ensuring that there is a lot of bait around. And obviously you can see this big school of kohuru as soon as we start descending. Demoiselles again to so in another very similar spot. I don't want to race to the bottom as you might see something on the way down, but I do want to find a nice little place for me to sit that gives me a good view, but doesn't make me too obvious to the surrounding fish. The demoiselles will do their job again. They'll start surrounding me and create another blanket that makes other fish inquisitive of what I'm, what's happening over here but at the same time they can't see exactly what I am. Again I spot another snapper out wide they're coming in. So I want to be make sure that my gun's ready at all times to get itself into position. You don't want to be swinging your gun too much or making erratic movements as the fish will just bugger off. Again, it would have been better to have a shorter gun in this situation. Same again, I want to dispatch my fish nice and quickly and get it into the float boat. Don't want to attract any unwanted attention. This will decrease my shark encounters dramatically. Applying same principle, but now I found an even better high spot. Here's a slightly higher sort of pinnacle coming up. And I'm going to do the same thing. Make my way down to it. Slowly stalk around the rock. Not making too much erratic movements and trying not to spook anything around. Again, straight away, kingfish come straight in. With this dirty water, there could be a fish anywhere. So just take my time and just check all around the rock. I spot there's a mob of pink nama sitting down the side of the rock and I decide I'll take one of those as it's up nice and shallow. Before heading back to the boat, I'm going to make up a ground bait with some kinna. 
Ground baits or burley should be the last resort when looking for snapper and other fish. As what you don't realise is if you do a burley straight away when you get into an area, you're disturbing the natural environment. And although you might think you're only affecting the fish in your initial vicinity, fish that are 50 metres, even 100 metres away, depending how noisy you are, will spook and they'll go, go away from what they originally were doing. And they won't always necessarily come and feed in your ground bait. So it does pay to swim the area, search around and see if you can find the fish before doing a ground bait. Then you won't disturb the fish in the general area. In this situation, it was just before we went back to the burrow. So I broke up maybe 10 counters down here and a whole heap of hungry snapper came racing in and it made for an easy shot. Snapper's diet will change all the time, so sometimes sea eggs will work, sometimes fish works better, um, so you always got to be aware that it's sometimes worth looking around in the area, finding the fish rather than relying on hoping they're going to come and eat your burley. started getting quiet in the spot so we thought we'd go back to the boat and move to another area. See if we can find slightly better visibility and maybe a few more snapper. Same again, the GoPro makes the visibility look a little bit better than what it actually was as we had good reflection off the white rock. Applying the same technique we did before but in shallower water, we're looking for high points and we're going to snap a snoop. We're going to sneak over the rocks and see if we can find snapper resting up in likely spots. When approaching a big rock like this, you want to approach the point that you think is the optimum part. As there could be snapper to my left or my right from this point. Don't charge over the top of a rock. You want to take your time so you get a good picture of what's happening. A nice gut is created between these two rocks, and I don't actually see it straight away, but there's two snapper there. It does take time for your eyes to adjust when looking down in the kelp for fish. So now we've got snapper three different ways. We've got them from lying on the bottom and calling them in. We've got them on ground baits. We've also got them snapper snooping. Heading further along this ridge, as there was nice current running along it, and there was good sun, I looked for the most optimum point. I could see in the distance that there was demoiselles hanging at the front of this rock. And I thought I'd sneak over and see what else is there. looked like an absolutely perfect spot. This is exactly where you would expect to see a snapper. And sure enough, here's one just sitting and drifting in the current with all the bait fish. I'm trying to take my time to get a good kill shot, but I just missed the mark. I want to quickly pull it back over the rock, as I'm sure there's going to be more snapper in this area. With the dirty water, there will be snap that will be alarmed by this, but they won't know exactly where it came from. I moved back down the rock a little bit and made another approach. Again, it takes the time for your eyes to adjust to see what you're looking at. I'm sort of looking all along here, and my eyes subconsciously are not looking for a complete pattern. I'm looking for finlets, white finlets, white chin, or just movement that would think or alert that I might see a snapper in front of myself. And I've spotted one sitting down in the bottom of the kelp there. I come back to tell Sophie so she can have a go. Here's another example on having a nice maneuverable gun. 
Everybody wants a really big, powerful gun that they can shoot a long way. But if you cut down your maneuverability, you'll miss out on a lot of fish. Sophie only has short arms, and although she's using a nice light 110, it can make it difficult for her to maneuver it through the kelp. And here's a great situation. Her approach is perfect. We see there's a snapper coming in here, but it takes her just that little bit of extra time to get that longer gun into position, and she can't get a good shot off. If this was a shorter gun, she most certainly would have got it. I managed a few snapper for the day, as well as pink mau mau, we got some nice pelagic fish too. Here's just a few tips. I'm certainly no master boaty, but a few things I do to make my boat easier to drive. I, I brace myself on the throttle like this. I have it mounted so it's easy at my height to hold on to. I use the trim a lot when I'm driving my boat. As I trim the motor up, it'll lift the nose up. I trim it down, it will hold the nose down. And that will change and adjust your fuel consumption. You'll make it better if you sit the boat up high on the waves. But also if your boat's porpoising too much, bouncing a lot, trim your motor down to try and hold the nose down. And as I mentioned, it turns out that the forecast was exactly right. We came rushing home on flat calm seas with no wind and topped off a great day. Although we didn't have the nice clear water, there was still plenty of fish in the mix.